So, oh, hello. Thanks for taking time to look at the water car instructional video. We're going to break it into three parts today. The first part will deal primarily with the controls within the car itself. The second part will show you how to operate it on the road. And the third part will deal with the operation in the water. So come on, let's get in the car and take a look at the controls. The first control on the dash is the emergency brake. Uh, this is uh, not like the emergency brakes in your car, but it works very easily. To release the emergency brake, you pull it down to the release position, and to engage it, you put it up the lock and step on the brake one time or two. That's all that's necessary. All right, the toggle switches. The first one here is the trim tab, and we'll discuss the use of the trim tab in water mode. You don't need it in land operation. Uh, the two switches here, this is the low beam light and the high beam light, and you'll see with the high beam light, the blue light goes on to let the operator know you're running high beams. Uh, we have navigation lights. Navigation lights are only used in water mode, but they are a red-green light in the bow and an all-around 360-degree light in the water. Uh, we have a fan switch, and so this fan turns on the fan in the radiator. It will come on automatically if the temperature reaches a certain point or you can turn it on yourself. Uh, we have uh, two build switches here, actually three. We have a forward build, a rear build, and a mid build. Both the forward and the aft build come on automatically if the water reaches a certain level or can be turned on manually. The mid bilge is turned on whenever you are in water mode and the jet is engaged. Uh, we've gone so far as to include a courtesy light. This is just a little light for at night that will show you the wheel well, or show you inside of the, the cabin. Uh, windshield wiper and the last one is an accessory. One of the most important gauges or items on the, on the dash is this one right here. And this is a breaker switch. If you put it in that position, the water car cannot access uh, any electricity, so it's essentially dead. To operate it, you merely move it to that position and engage the electricity. Uh, three more lights that we have here. We have a turn signal light, left and right on either side, and as I mentioned, the high beam light. Uh, the uh, steering wheel is telescopic. Just pull back and forth, and you've got turn signals for left turn, or right turn. Okay, let's go around to the other side of the car now and take a look at uh, the other side of the dash. The steering wheel, you'll see a number of controls, the first of which is the emergency flasher light. So by pushing this button in, you can see that the flashers are activated. The large circular dial here indicates the revolutions per minute or the tachometer. It's measuring how fast the engine is turning. This engine uh, is set to cut out at 6200 RPMs for safety reasons. So if you approach 6200, you'll notice that the engine will begin to run rough. Um, the key, which is used just like any key to start the motor, however, when you're in boat mode, we recommend, and you can see this label here, that you run the blower motor for several minutes prior to starting the engine. The blower motor is easily engaged, you just turn the key. You don't start the car, you just turn the key and that engages the blower motor. This is the speedometer. The speedometer is rather unique in that it's GPS activated. So the speedometer can measure the distance that you're traveling, whether you're on land or on water. There's a reset button underneath this speedometer to allow you to set it for a particular trip. Uh, we have a water temperature measurement, oil pressure measurement. We have a voltmeter and a fuel gauge. Have a glove box and a radio. The radio has an HDMI fitting inside it to allow you to recharge your cell phone should you wish. Um, the real critical switches on the dash are right here, and they're labeled water and land. And you use these buttons to either retract or 
expand the wheels to put it in a proper mode for operation water or land. So, for example, we're currently in land mode. The wheels are all the way down, okay? and if I were to enter the water, I would press the water mode, and you'll see that the wheels are raising as we've done this and they will continue to raise until you hear that audible alarm. That audible alarm tells you that the wheels are fully retracted and at this point you can begin to operate the water car at speed in the water. Obviously we're on land here right now so by pressing the land button you can see that the wheels are extending and again once we reach an audible alarm on the dash, we know that we have the wheels fully extended and it's safe to operate the vehicle on the land. A couple of other uh, controls we have here. Underneath you'll see a, a large red selector switch and that's typical of a battery switch in any marine vessel. Water cars come complete with two gel batteries. This switch allows you to put, turn them off in other words, no power going to the water car to select either battery one, battery two, or operate it in both. And I kind of like to vary them between it. You want to make sure always that you have full charge in both batteries. Moving back to the shift lever, water cars have a standard H pattern four speed shift. And to get into reverse, you depress the clutch, raise this lockout button, and pull back, and that's it. That's all that's necessary to get into reverse. If you push it forward, it will snap into the neutral mode. This particular switch here engages the jet, and it's really only used when you're in the water mode. And when you engage it and are on land mode, you'll see an indicator light come here. And this light is telling you that your jet is engaged and your wheels are down. The jet uses water for lubrication, so you really don't want to operate out of the water in this mode for more than 100 yards or so. And the last lever we have here is to allow the water car, right now it's in forward mode, so if we're in the water and you press the accelerator, the jet will move the car forward. If you want to reverse the motion in the water, you merely pour ba pull back this lever and the car is in reverse. And so that really sums up the controls within the water car. The next part we're going to take is to show you through the operation of recovering it from a shipping container and actually operating it on the highway. Thank you.